In this video, we will cover customization of Dscope flows. Dscope provides an easy way to build user journeys, which can then be embedded into your application with ease. This particular screen shows the list of flows that can be customized in Dscope. In this tutorial, we will customize the sign-in flow. When you enter the flow screen, you will see an empty canvas with just one single action. This action is just a placeholder. Let's start by deleting this action. There are three different types of tasks that can be performed within the screen. We can add a screen, add an action, or add a condition. Let's start by adding a screen. The screen is shown inside of your application when the flow is embedded in the application. Let us first change the name of the screen. The screen here starts with a sample error message and just text body. On the left here are different elements that can be added to the screen. On the right, properties for each of those elements which can be customized. Also notice that the screen can be displayed in light theme or dark theme. These theme, colors, and styles can be customized using the styles menu on the left. This is covered in customizing styles tutorial separately. For this particular screen, which is the login screen, let's start by deleting this particular text and adding a simple email box as the first step. Just drag and drop from the left to the screen, add the email box. Let's customize the label here to say, enter email. And we can change this to called email address. The size can be customized. You can either have it to fill the entire container or have it a small size. Let's leave it like that. The mandatory property also can be changed to say, is this a mandatory field for the screen or not? We'll leave it as is. After you add the enter email address, let's add a button, which we can say login with with email. There are different styles of the button that are supported, outlined, contained, which will match different styles, a size, other things can be customized. You can validate inputs as well. Now we have a simple login box. Let's make it a little smarter and add a few more things here. Right below that, I want to have a nice divider because we can customize to say either you log in with email or you can log in with one of the social buttons. There are multiple different social login buttons supported by Dscope, Google, Facebook, and many others. Before we add the social login buttons, let's look at this object called container. Containers are designed to help you lay out different elements I just added a container to the screen. I want to make sure the direction of the container is horizontal because I want to lay different social login buttons next to each other. There's the first social login button, Google. Let's add Microsoft next to it. And let's add LinkedIn right next to it. Let's add a text here so that this looks nicer. We want to say Microsoft. Let's also change Google. We want to encourage users to choose Google as our login. We will make this a different style. That's our screen. Another critical feature is the preview screen. You can enter width and height to see how your screen looks like in different form factors. This is the light mode. We will leave it like that and hit done. And that is how you customize the screens in Dscope flows. Let's connect the start to this particular login screens, which means when you embed this flow into your application, the first thing that will be shown is the login screen. The next step at this point of time is to connect this particular screen to certain actions. The two obvious actions, sign in with OTP and email or the social login. 
For adding actions, let's start social login, which is OAuth action right here. So we searched, added. Let's place it right there. Connect it. And then let's add OTP with email as our second login mechanism. As you can see, when we do OTP with email, Dscope brings all the right actions needed. We connect it there. There are different actions here, sign up or sign in with OTP, verify the code. After successful authentication, we want to go ahead and log the user in. Also notice there are certain other actions that could be connected, like if you want the user on the verify OTP screen, let's see what it looks like. This is the verify OTP screen, which is pre-built in. It looks like that. It has submit the OTP or send the OTP again or choose another authentication method. If you want to connect choosing another authentication method back to the login screen, you can do that. And to complete the entire flow, let's go ahead and add the last action, which is login and generate a JOT. So JOT token for completing the login. And both of those actions can be connected. That's a complete flow. We can save the flow and embed this flow into our application. We will cover embedding of the flow and customizing your application to use this flow in a different tutorial. Now let us look at the concept of conditions in Disco flows. Conditions are designed to enable use cases such as multi-factor auth or different login mechanisms for different geographical locations. Conditions can be customized and create different paths using different parameters. So for this use case, let's create a conditions for high risk user. We can choose any of the parameters for the user login inputs that are provided. We will use the risk score for this particular user. We can say the risk is greater than 0.7. And in this scenario, perform a different action. Otherwise, go ahead. And let's quickly modify this flow. And we will modify to say if the user logs in with OAuth and if the risk is high, then go ahead and go back to the OTP flow. And if the risk is not high, then go ahead and log in. And that becomes our flow, which enables OAuth login, OTP login. If the risk is high in case of OAuth login, then we do an OTP as a secondary. Let's go ahead and save this flow. That's how easy it is to customize flows and entire user journeys in Dscope. Thank you.